Megan has gone too far. Harry looked emaciated after cutting off his friendship with Nacho Figueres. Hello, friends. Welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Harry and Nacho are not friends anymore. They are saying Meghan upset Nacho's wife. Nacho Figueres and Delfina Blackier are a polo power couple. It's too bad the friendship with Nacho seems to be fading for Harry because Nacho seemed like a guy that could talk some sense into Harry when needed. Harry was probably getting his polo ponies for free from Nacho's staple, and the loss of this one last part of his identity must be a real gut punch to Harry. I commend Delfina for putting up with Megan for as long as she did. I think Nacho's wife was ultra pleasant and complimentary to Megan because she could tell she just met a snake, someone she'll manage to avoid in the future, and Nacho understands completely that Harry married a psycho. For the short time she had to be around her, she smiled and was sweet as pie. Harry nor Meghan ever knew the complete disgust Nacho's wife felt and the huge relief she felt when they left. Is there any bridge Meghan hasn't burned? Yikes. I almost feel sorry for Harry. Moved across the world, lost many friendships, and sold out his family relationships to the highest bidder. Makes one friend in California, and his wife can't help but ruin it. It sounds like a very isolated existence. Here is what those in Megan's camp are missing. They could have done all those things. Moving, friendships, bought a huge house they don't need, worked part-time for the crown, developed a thriving foundation. But it was the isolation of Harry from his motherland and family that makes the whole thing acid sour. None of that had to happen. He sat there with Oprah knowing what Meghan said wasn't true, or only slightly true, and said nothing. As a Brit and royal, he damn well knows they were not married three days before. I truly get the sense he's being handled, so as not to somehow know what is actually going on. She showered him with love and affection, which he'd been missing since the age of 12, and he followed her around the globe and never wanted to lose her. They could absolutely be living in L.A. while still maintaining relationships with both families. I'm surprised by now that Harry hasn't had enough of Meghan blowing up bridges. Their wedding was the most romantic because it was the look in their eyes. I never liked her until then. Maybe I was wrong, I thought. A year later, I realized how right I was. We all are. How much lust leads a man down the wrong track? How far does it lead him? Well, some men will do anything for lust. There was this relatively well-known case in the U.S. The guy had been in trouble with the law from the time he was young. Nothing violent, just mainly scams. And he married the woman who had been by his side through thick and thin. And he eventually decided to turn over a new leaf. Then he meets this escort, who love bombs him. And he promptly falls in love with her, leaves his faithful and long-suffering wife, and marries this new young chick. Soon afterward, she scams him out of practically all his money, plants drugs in his car, and calls the cops in the hopes that they would arrest him, among other things. The last straw for him was when she attempted to hire someone to kill him. Unfortunately, that guy was spooked and went to the cops and wore a wire while they were discussing the transaction. Even after she knew that her husband had seen the video, she still tried to pressure him to help her. She was completely delusional, it was a very useful view into the mind of a narcissist. Maybe somebody here will know the name of the woman I'm talking about. An insider shared a real-life experience. If this is true, I have to feel sorry for that piece of shit Harry. How isolating his life must be without any friends from before Meghan. Who are their friends now? Paid employees who leave their employ like riders exiting an amusement park ride. Harry is trash and he betrayed his family, but I can't imagine it feels good to have none of your old friends anymore. I'd love to hear from any of the Montecito Hollywood set who are under no obligation to stay silent about what they've encountered when dealing with Megan. I once dated an asshole nobody liked. Friends, family, even people that knew him told me what a piece of shit he was and I wouldn't hear of it. The more they pushed, the more I defended him. 
They just didn't see this awesome person with great potential as I did. After the shiny news wore off, he decided to show me who he really was, and I'd been written off by people that tried to warn me. I realized I had an asshole and one that used me for his wants and needs. The people that really cared came back around, but a few I thought were friends went on with their lives and are no longer in mine. I felt like an idiot on top of all of the hurtful shit I eventually found out and the fallout of the breakup, but I learned something valuable. I don't always see the obvious, and that's where friends and family are important. They see it, and they let you know. They don't tell you to take it really slow and get to know her. Even when they see a great partner for you, they say it when red flags are all over your new love. If they back away, then you've either changed to fit the mold the new love wants and they don't recognize you, or the new love is such a shitty person they can't stand to be around. Wake up, Harry. There is a common denominator here. There are lessons to be learned all over this situation you've gotten yourself into. One viewer commented, Well, Harry can always leave, but children complicate it. Narcs often will use children in a divorce to exact punishment on the ex. They'll turn the kids against them. Even if they get joint custody, Megan likely would be the custodial parent, having them during the week, and Harry could be portrayed negatively to them. Look how Megan went from praising her dad on the TIG to turning him into a villain who didn't do anything for her growing up and totally ghosted him. And Sussex Squad constantly praised Harry and Meghan, but when Harry said he was going to the coronation, they all turned on him and took Meghan's side, sometimes leaving had a price. Remember when she said, one should always pass the salt and pepper together? The moment I heard that, I thought that was some sort of esoteric information you learned from a book, not from how you were raised. But the way she brings attention to her thank you notes and her insistence that Archie learns manners manners makes me think that she's deficient in understanding true etiquette. I think it intimidates her, baffles her, and embarrasses her that simple acts of courtesy and protocol do not come naturally. Her overinflated ego must have suffered a noisy leak when she found herself surrounded by elegant people who were well-versed in basic etiquette. So in childish rebellion, she tried to imply that they were hopelessly out of date and that her mission was to modernize. She'd be the great leader who would inspire the institution to discard these relics, of which she had no understanding, and she, Megan, Duchess of Sussex, would replace it with California casual, in her insufferable hubris, she assumed that her way was the only way, never caring that her way is actually crude, uncultured, selfish, and cringe. What do you think about Meghan's constant burning of Harry's relationships in the UK and the US? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.